All right, Joella, we have some beautiful plants here. What are we gonna do? We're gonna create a butterfly garden. Cool. Now, when you do butterfly gardens, you gotta do a little bit of research. The majority of butterflies like nectar producing flowers that usually are like full sun. So you really need a lot of sun for a butterfly garden. And, and I think we have I think we've got 20, full sun right? here. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, also, when you plant a butterfly garden, you got to think of the whole life cycle of a butterfly because the adults are the, usually the ones that are gathering the nectar. Okay. And you've got to build, you know, have some kind of uh, food for the caterpillars. So we've got a, a, a little bit of that here today. Um, and we'll go over each of the plants that we're going to be, be putting in the garden. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to create a space for them to get water. I think they like to, to do and to be able to stretch out on some rocks to sun themselves. Oh. Okay. So we're gonna and of course WKNO has got plenty of trees that are native around here that fulfills a lot of the rest of the life cycle of the butterflies that we're kind of trying to attract. Good, good. So we've we're gonna get everything in for a complete life cycle of many different butterflies. Okay. So we will get started by we've 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 uh, Kind of, this is very nice soil. This soil has been amended already. So we've just tilled it up a little bit with a shovel and loosened it. And now we're ready to plant. All right. One of the first things we'll plant in here is this red hot poker plant. <laughs> it likes lots of sun. And of course it's got uh, nice red orange flowers that uh, butterflies like. And then we've got Another one that is, this is a native to the United States. This is Liatris. Hmm. And it'll have little uh, lavender spikes out on the top of it. Oh, nice. That butterflies like real well. Okay. Another perennial that we've got is sedum. Sedums, I know that. Now these will bloom in the fall. So we're trying to, what we're trying to do is get something blooming in this bed all the time mm -hmm. so that all the butterflies throughout the season have got nectar to get. Okay. So this will extend our our uh, fall blooming, and we have a couple of those. Nice. So, so far all of these plants are easy to maintain? Easy to maintain. Good. All like to live together. Okay. Have the same kind of requirements. None of these plants like to be wet, which ah, is good. good. So we're kind of going for a, a uh, moist, but that can dry out bed. Okay. Uh, next, we've got something just for the monarchs. Ah. And this is the Asclepius. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the only plant that they need for their entire life cycle. They like the nectar from this, the caterpillars eat on this, and this is the only plant that you need to attract monarchs wow. to your garden. The only plant? The only plant. How about that? Okay. And this is the only one they eat. And since they're very small plants, in fact, they're blooming right now along the roadsides. We'll put three of them together there so we'll have enough for somebody to come and eat and uh, produce uh, their entire life cycle with that. How about that? Uh, next, we have something that should bloom a lot during the summer. Yeah. This is Rudbeckia. I know that one. And this is particularly Rudbeckia herta, uh -huh. which is more favored by butterflies. Let's see. Next, we have Phlox. Ah, uh, yeah. And the, now some of these perennials don't bloom all summer long, which is why we have a succession of, of plants and some annuals in, that we're gonna plant in here. But we'll put that in here. Uh, then we, uh, we'll go to the other side and get the rest of our perennials okay. in. We have a very small, at this point, Russian sage. <laughs> this is also a butterfly favorite. And then we have another fall blooming plant. This is, now it's an aster. This has got a very long scientific name, but this is the our aromatic aster, the one that has the woody leaves that blooms really late in the fall. Okay. So after the sedum bloom, then this will bloom. And that next we have another perennial called Gallardia. And this will bloom all summer long. We have a couple of those because they're bright. And butterflies like bright colors. Mm. The, the oranges, the reds, the yellows, the hot pinks, and sometimes the purples. They like purple also. Okay. So along with that, oh, yeah. we also have like the ever-popular echinacea. Mm -hmm. 
And this is a smaller variety. Since we have a smaller bed, I thought we'd get a smaller variety. This is called Pow Wow. Pow Wow. Pow Wow. <laughs> And next we'll move on to our annuals because as much as perennials are great for butterflies, we need something that's blooming all the time. And one thing that can do that is your annuals. Hmm. And it's easy to slip them in because see, look, this is our perennials. And you see, we have some spots left. Yeah, we do. So we're gonna fill those in with some annuals. The first one that they like, the, some like the best is Monarda. Mm -hmm. And you notice mm -hmm. this isn't quite blooming yet, so. It's forming blooms, so we'll have that there. Next, we have a purple <laughs> heliotrope. Now, the reasons why they like this heliotrope, not only is it purple and a good nectar source, but the flowers are kind of flat, and that's what butterflies tend to like, is flat flowers, so they can land easily on them to get the nectar. Okay. So we have the heliotrope, right. and let's see. This is filling in pretty good. Yeah. And then, of course, who doesn't like ah. zinnias in their perfect colors Beautiful that butterflies colors. love? Beautiful. Um, something else that butterflies like a lot is lantana. Love lantanas. Lantana is gorgeous. And so this will bloom all the rest of the summer and into the fall. Nice. Another plant we have that, that butterflies actually like is portulaca, hmm. also known as moss rose. Okay. So we've got a couple of those to put here. Um, then, of course, we want something for them to eat and also to uh, get nectar from. And those are some herbs. Ah. So right here, and you can see that this oregano is blooming. That's nice. Yeah. Which is very nice, is nice because the butterflies can, can take advantage of that. And we'll plant it here so that it trails over the side. Nice, okay. And we'll add some more space to the garden. Okay. Uh, we need some other things that butterflies, larvae can eat, and that's <laughs> parsley. Parsley. None of the, and I, fennel they eat also, but I've got parsley. So we're going to move that over just a little bit and put our parsley in here. And another thing they like is sage. So we've got one sage to go in the corner, mm -hmm. and hopefully these uh, herbs are gonna be at the edge as they can spill over okay. the edge of the bed. So uh, they're easier a, to see. You have a real good eye for design, I see, right? And Pretty another good. herb that they like is thyme. Huh. And again, this is trailing, so we're gonna put it at the edge. Okay. So it can trail over the side. And of course, we have another parsley that we're going to set in here. And then chives. Butterflies actually like uh, the blooms of chives. So mm. we're gonna put some chives in too. All right, so we've got them all set out and now it's time to plant. All right. But I just wanted to let you know that what I did is after you know looking around and finding the right plants, I went ahead and did a plan. Nice. Uh, drew out a chalk on some concrete and laid all <laughs> the plants out so that, you know, we would know if it fit. So, and it does. And so it fits. Now we are ready to plant. This out. Oh, yeah. And the roots aren't too bad. There's a separation. Not bad. Hi, right, Joellen, what do you think? It looks good. beautiful. Mm -hmm. But now we've got the mulch. Yes, got to do that, right? We want to, uh, the mulch will help hold the moisture in the soil for all these plants. Okay. And we're going to do that before we plant those itty bitty tiny vinca in the front. Okay. And a trick that I use when we're trying to go around small plants, you have this big bag of mulch, is uh -huh. you take a container and you fill it with the mulch so that you can easily it. just set it around the plants. Because you don't want, we don't want this thick. We okay. just want to cover the ground. Yeah, I like that trick. So what do you think so far? That looks all good, nice and mulched. Uh -huh. And very, now, very now it's time to add the little bit of flowers that we have left that okay. are so small. And we'll just fill in where we see some blank spaces. We've got six. 
Well, you there's got three. three of them. Three. See, there's a hole right there. Okay. You just sit Maybe it there. That would I will be good. It. Okay. Looks like we got a hole here. One here. Yep. And there we go. Next, we've got to provide some sand in shallow dish that we can keep wet all the time because they'll they'll be able to land on it. It'll be solid, but it'll be wet enough that they can get a drink from. Okay. And we're going to set up our rocks around it so they'll have some place to sunbathe on. Okay. All right, Joellen. So we got everything our pollinators need, right? That's right. We've got flowers. We've got uh, uh, some feeder plants for some of the caterpillars. Mm -hmm. We've got a place for them to get a drink and a place for them to rest and Sunbathe. Sunbathe. Sunbathe their wings. <laughs> yes. Looks inviting. It does. I feel like going down there and just sunbathing, right? Yes, warm enough. <laughs> well, look, Joella, we definitely appreciate that. Can't wait to see what this looks like throughout the growing season. It's, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be beautiful. Thank, Thank you much. You. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.